Hi there, and welcome to the third and last video in my series on how we go about completing the square. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at how we handle quadratic expressions where we've got a negative x squared term in. And as you can see, I've got four examples here. I'm going to take you through the first example, and then you might want to have a go at this second one, although it's slightly harder but certainly have a go at these last two. Now, before we start, I'm assuming that you've watched the previous videos in this series and certainly know how to square out a bracket. If not, do go back and take a look at those videos. So for this first one anyway, we've got 5 minus 8x minus x squared, and we've got to write it in this format a minus b times x plus c all squared, where a, b and c are constant. So to do this, we write the identical sign, and we turn to the negative x squared term, and pull out a minus in front of a bracket. Remember, this is minus 1. And so what we do is we start with the x squared term here, so we've got minus x squared, and to get minus 8x next, we need to put plus 8x there. Minus 1 times plus 8x gives us the minus 8x. And then for the positive 5, we need to switch that to negative 5, so that minus 1 times minus 5 gives us that plus 5. Now, all we do is basically the same as what we've done in the previous tutorials for completing the square across this quadratic expression that you see in the brackets. Only, we've just got to remember that we've got this negative sign out the front. So, let's just, just put a negative there and put a square bracket up here. And we complete the square then, in the normal way. So, for something like this, we handled this in the very first video. We just put a bracket down, with a squared out there, put x at the front here and halve the coefficient of x. So that's going to be half of plus 8, which is plus 4. And when you square this out, you're going to get x squared. You get 4x plus another 4x, which is 8x. And then you're going to get 4 squared, which is 16. There is no 16 in here, so we just take off 16. And we put back the minus 5. So this is now identical to what you see up there. And what I'm going to do next is just expand out the bracket. We get minus all of x plus 4 all squared, so that's minus x plus 4 all squared. And minus 16 minus 5, well that's going to be minus 21. And then you've got this minus here, so you've got minus minus 21, which is plus 21. And what I would do next is just switch this round so that we've got it in this format. So this is going to be identical then to 21 minus x plus 4 all squared. So you can see it's in this format. And if we're asked to state the values of a, b and c, a would be 21. Be careful here, b would be just 1 because we've got this minus here. So b would be 1 and c would be 4. Okay, so that's step one done, and they're all handled in essentially much the same way. Now with this next one, it is a bit harder than the one we've got here, but nonetheless, you might want to have a go at doing this one. So just give you a moment to pause the video if you'd like to have a go. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Let's see how you got on. Well, with this one, you'll notice, obviously, we've got not a minus 1 here, but we've got minus 2. And when you've got a number other than negative 1 here, what we've got to do is pull it out in the same way as we did here, but not look at going across all three terms, just the two terms here, the x term and the x squared term, as we did in the previous video where we looked at say 2x squared types or 3x squared types. We just concentrated on those two terms here. So do the same. So we've got minus 2 times just x squared here and then it's going to be minus 2 times minus 6x. 
to give us the plus 12x. Close the bracket off and then just put the 5 down, okay? Then we complete the square across the x squared minus 6x. So keep the minus 2 there, big square bracket, okay? And then curve bracket in here with a squared there. Put an x at the front and halve the coefficient of x, which is now half of minus 6, which is minus 3. Square this out, you're going to get x squared, you're going to get minus 3x, minus another 3x, which is minus 6x, and then you'll get plus 9. We take away 9 because it's not there. Close the bracket off, and then put your plus 5 on the end. Now expand the bracket here, and you're going to get minus 2 times all of x minus 3, all squared. And then you've got minus 2 times minus 9, which is plus 18. And then you've got the plus 5. Now if we simplify this, but write 18 plus 5, 23 at the start. Okay, we've got 23 there. And then we've got minus 2 times all of x minus 3, all squared. So again here with this one, a would be 23, b would be 2, and then c would be minus 3. Okay, well, we've got two examples here. This one involves a lot more fractions, so it's a little harder. But see if you can have a go at these two. I'll give you a moment now to pause the video then. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So with this first one, it's going to be very similar to this one up here. So this is going to be identical to. Because it's minus x squared, I'm just going to pull minus 1 or just minus there outside a bracket and we'll look at all three terms. So that's going to be x squared, then minus 10x and then minus 4. Completing the square now, across the expression in the bracket. We're just going to have curve bracket here, squared, x there, half the coefficient of x, half minus 10, which is minus 5. Square this out, you're going to get x squared, minus 5x, minus another 5x, which is minus 10x. Then you're going to get minus 5 all squared, which is 25. Take it off, okay? And then we've got the minus 4. Now expand the bracket, multiply through with minus 1, and you're going to get minus all of x minus 5, all squared. And then minus 25 minus 4 is minus 29. So you've got minus minus 29, so that's going to be plus 29. And then put that at the front, swap it around. In other words, you've got 29 minus x minus 5, all squared. And you can see with this one, a is 29, b is 1, and c would be minus 5. Okay, so that's that one. Now the next one is a little harder. It involves fractions, a lot more fractions. So let's see how we get on with this one. So because it's not negative x squared, we're only going to pull out minus 5 across the two terms here. So you're going to have minus 5 and then bracket x squared. And then for the minus 3x, that's going to be plus. And then you're going to have to divide the 3 with the 5. So you're going to have plus 3 fifths x. OK? And then we've got the plus 1 on the end. Now we complete the square for x squared plus 3 fifths x. So put the minus 5 there, square bracket, and then we'll have a curved bracket inside, and square that. So we're going to have an x at the front here, and we've got to half 3 fifths. If you multiply half with 3 fifths, you're going to get 3 over 10. So that's going to be plus 3 tenths there. Square this out, you're going to get x squared, plus 3 tenths x, plus another 3 tenths x, which is 3 fifths x. Square this 3 tenths, you're going to get 3 squared over 10 squared, which is 9 over 100. So you need to subtract that, so it's minus 9 over 100. 
close the bracket off and then put the plus one in. So this is going to be identical to minus five times each of the two terms in the bracket. So you're going to get minus five times all of x plus three tenths, all squared there. And minus five times minus nine over 100 is going to give us a positive value. And cancel the five into the 100. So it's going to give me nine over 20. So it's plus nine twentieths. And then we've got the plus one there. And if I take nine twentieths plus one whole one, which is 20 twentieths, I'm going to have 29 twentieths. So I'll write that as 29 twentieths rather than one and nine twentieths. And then we've got this term here, minus five times all of x plus three tenths. And that's all squared. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this series on completing the square. And I hope these videos have been able to equip you with the methods then that will help you through any of the type of problems that you might face. So, thanks for listening and uh, see you in further tutorials, I hope.